among the angels there are different different categories oh i saw millions and millions and millions of angels of god you see two wings brothers and sisters we are moving from glory and glory to glorious experiences Hallelujah. of what god had created for man expressing his great love for man and building up mansions for him up there in heaven and this episode we are going to see something very interesting something we've been very often imagining and now we have the man of god who visited heaven so many times he has seen these angels first hand report of what angels are how they look like and what are they doing there up in heaven amen so are you ready to travel with me to the realm the spiritual realm of angels uncle uh, when we think of angels all that we could think of is uh, ghost like appearances of uh, <laughs> of uh, beautiful beings running about here and there and yeah. uh, uh, doing some magic for us and all these things and kids are very often attracted towards angels and uh, sometimes when uh, someone is very beautiful we call them oh she looks like an angel Amen. but we haven't seen an angel we would be scared to see one suddenly <laughs> but uh, you have been to heaven and seen these wonderful beings uh, could you tell us uncle how exactly they look like well um the first thing you must uh, know is that an angel of god is a heavenly person as god made the world the sun the moon the stars and finally the mankind he made the angels of god also they are the handy work of the most high god we must know one thing they were existing along with god and uh, they were uh, made probably several 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 millions of years much earlier than he even thought of making the world and uh, the heaven and the earth and the skies and so on the very first uh, book of the bible it um, says in genesis 3:24 that god made a cherub to god the garden of eden very first book of the bible and also the same thing you see in uh, ezekiel 28 verse 14 a cherub made to cover the throne of god so that means the day the throne of god was made the same day god would have made this wonderful being called angel of god now amongst the angel of god you have three varieties the angels of god then the cherubs then the seraphims among the angels of god there are some who just are used like errand boys but some endowed with supernatural power and ability for example if you read revelation chapter 10 1 and 2 you see a mighty angel of god his face was shining like the noonday sun and uh, he was so tall with one leg he stood on the earth earth is so big and just one foot only he kept on the earth and when he spoke it was just like the waters of the sea roaring are a lion roaring so among the angels there are different different categories and then the cherubs chosen people as i said in ezekiel 28:14 they cover the throne of god so that's why when god commanded solomon to make a 
throne for him, the mercy seat. Exodus 25, 20 says, he made a cherub and uh, there were actually two cherubs and each was spreading its wings. One said it was touching the wall of the temple and the other said it was touching the um, feather, the wing of the other cherub. And the other wing of the other cherub was touching the wall of the other side of the temple. So there are several kinds. Then again, just in only one place, you read about the seraphims. Uh, they are found in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 2. And uh, they had six wings, two wings to fly, two wings to cover their faces, two wings to cover their feet. That really touched my heart. They're so close to God, but they dare not look at his face. And they dare not show any disrespect to him. That's why they covered their legs. So it is an amazing creature. The angel is an amazing creature. Just in only one place, you see about the seraphim. And about the six wings, of course, you read again in Revelation chapter 4, the four beasts. When you read about these four beasts, the Bible says they also had six wings. But for this, no other creature has been mentioned in the Bible. Apart from this, in no other place in the Bible, any other creature is mentioned as if it's having six wings. So the angels of God, number two, the angels of God with special power, and then number three, angels of God with a special errand. For example, Michael, if you read the Holy Scriptures as uh, uh, found in Revelation 12, 7, and uh, Jude, verse 9, and uh, uh, the book of Daniel, verse 11. If you read all these verses, Michael is the head of the army of the Almighty God. God doesn't need an army. <laughs> <laughs> With one word, he has created the whole universe. With one word, he can destroy his enemies. But I do not know why. But he has an army, and Michael heads it. And Gabriel, another important person with a special errand. If you read Luke 1, 19 and 20, he carries special messages to special people. And Luke 1, 27, he carries a special message to Mary, the mother of our precious Lord. And again, if you read Daniel chapter 8 and verse 16, when there was a, an important secret message which has to be decoded and delivered to Daniel, Gabriel was sent. And again, in Daniel 9, 22 and 23, it, it's only Gabriel who appears before Daniel and says, Daniel, from the day you prayed, God heard your prayers, but now he has sent me with a reply. So he said, Daniel, you are the most beloved of God, very much beloved of God. That's why I came specially. So amongst the angels of God, ordinary angels, and secondly, angels with special power, special uh, anointing. Thirdly, angels with special errand. Then the cherub. The cherub is probably only to adorn the, the, the throne. throne of God, <laughs> to cover the throne of God. They, they are uh, ones who adorn. So that's why if you read Acts 6.15, when with this uh, wonderful man, Stephen, was speaking to the people. His face began to shine like the face of an angel. And uh, such people are described as 
cherubs in Ezekiel 10, 14. And seraphims, again, they are mentioned only in one place, and they're all the time before God. And uh, these are the various appearances. Now, ordinarily, how an angel appears? Revelation 10, 1 and 2 is the best example. You read over there. He had legs. <laughs> <laughs> he had hands because in his hand he was holding a book. So if you read uh, Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 6, when God spoke to Isaiah, you find Isaiah crying, Lord, I'm a man with unclean lips. Then the an angel. angel of God takes from the tongue, the, uh, I mean the burning the coal. coal, and put it on his lips. Now let me tell you what I saw, how they <laughs> looked. Now, if you read the Holy Scriptures as found in Matthew 28, 2 to 5, you find over there, an angel of God coming and just pushing the stone that was covering the entrance to our Lord's sepulchre. If you read Matthew 27, 66, they secured the tomb as much as possible. They sealed it and they put the best soldiers probably, soldiers who will not sleep, <laughs> to, guard, to guard the empty tomb of our Lord. But just one angel came. In Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible says, when Ezekiel had a vision of an angel of God, he says, what looked like the hand of a man, man. the angel had. So in heaven, when I saw the angels of God, the first time I saw them was when the Lord Jesus Christ heard my prayer for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And when I was praying, nearly one month after I received the anointing of the Holy Spirit, when I saw the Lord Jesus Christ and so on, I went to pray for a a young man who was dying with my dad, my uh, church elders, and so on. And that was the time I uh, felt so helpless uh, that I had no faith to pray for God to raise this man up. And so I came and cried, and uh, Pastor Lemur um, told me, you must pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So I began to pray for one full month, only for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Morning of the good. Morning, I'll pray, go to the office, come back in the evening, till 12 o'clock I'll pray, Lord, give me the gifts of the Holy Spirit or I die. It was that time, one day, the hand of God came and lifted me up and I went to heaven for the first time. Oh, I saw millions and millions and millions of angels of God. And that was the first time I saw them. What was your reaction, Uncle, at that time? How did you feel when you saw an angel for the first time? Oh, it Millions was so of them. <laughs> thrilling and so full of joy and happiness. Their very uh, look, their face. Did they see you coming into heaven? Sure, sure, sure. And uh, you see, when, when you see the angel of God, as I said, he has the form of a human being. But as you read right now in Matthew 28, 2 to 4, you see they have the glory of God all the time around them. If you read Luke 1, 19 and 20, Gabriel says, I have come from the presence of the Most High God. So that brightness, that glory, of the Almighty God is always around them. Though 
they do have hands and legs, what you see is, you see of course the face with the nose and eyes and so on and with the hair, flowing hair and th these hairs are not like our hair, they are golden hair. They look so beautiful. I won't say it, it is a pure gold or pure black in between the two. <laughs> and it looks so beautiful. And uh, their faces are all the time glowing with the mighty glory of God. And uh, it's full of love, full of joy. And uh, the, the way they, uh, they are dressed, it's just uh, flowing. A robe dark, like. A, a robe like a white robe. And even that is shining. And again, exactly as the Almighty God limits His glory according to the receiving, accepting, or assimilating capacity, spiritual capacity of mankind, these angels of God also reveal their glory according to the assimilating capacity of each individual. So for some, he may appear as an ordinary being, but for some, in all his glory. It depends on how you are in your soul and where you stand in your spiritual growth and achievement before the Almighty God. So as you see them, you, you, you do see something like a robe and something like a hand and it, it is covered up to this. And then you see two wings flowing from their uh, back, two wings. And uh, sometimes the, these wings come up. How are the wings, uh, Uncle? Like a bird's wings? or Yeah, it, or it, like is, it is exactly like the bird's wings. Um, I would rather say they look like the wings of the peacock when uh, the peacock is in all its happiness <laughs> and joy. A color of those wings, is it white, white or? Pure no. white. And you see it is merged with the uh, uh, body. It is merged with the um, personality. And they look beautiful. I would rather say God has uh, given it to them as uh, an additional uh, equipment of beauty and uh, uh, glamour, what shall I say? <laughs> oh, it, it looks so beautiful. But there are times when I have seen these wings up. And most of those times are when they are in action. For example, once I was um, invited to preach in a particular place and uh, there was a lot of uh, commotion in that city and uh, unwanted problems and uh, these uh, people who invited me for that meeting uh, they were a little bit hesitant whether uh, uh, to invite me to come there the problem is not because of me but some other problem there so there was a faction and this and that. So they were uh, a little bit hesitant, but, and I was uh, praying in my room, unaware of all these happenings, uh, problems and the happenings and uh, hazards. Chaos. <laughs> yes. And uh, an angel of God came and he said, Come, it's time to go. And as I neared, I felt everything is not very much uh, conducive. And I climbed up the platform, sat and prayed. And suddenly, I saw on both sides of my seat, two mighty angels of God. Where, where you were sitting on the stage? Where I was sitting. And uh, this side and that side. And their uh, wings were up. And their faces were gruff. As if they were ready for war. Ready for war. Come what may, you will have to do your part and leave. We will be there to protect you. And it was uh, 
uh, I mean, what is so encouraging. And you become a lion when they come and stand by your side. And in the same way, the people who wanted to create havoc, they came with deadly weapons, with the torches in their hands, but for no reason, suddenly they put everything down, came, sat down in the meeting, and finally, uh, when I said, I have a feeling in my heart that tonight I would love to lay hands and pray for all who want to be prayed for. Uh, very rarely I do that, but I do not know why. But God says like that. And when I came down the platform, when I sat inviting the people to come to me in a line, lo and behold, the same people came bowing before me so piously for God's blessings. Those people who came with deadly weapons to Tarches. cause a chaos there are standing before you bowing down. Yes. Of course, they had nothing against me, but there was some problem. But thank God. So, when you see the angels with their wings up, I know they are in action. They're determined. They say, come. Come what may. Come on, we will meet the challenge. Like that. Otherwise, it's docile. <laughs> <laughs> the wings are docile. And uh, it's so beautiful to look at them. Do you get any noise when they, uh, they operate the wings or when they... Uh, not uh, so much. But the most important uh, thing is, when you are praying in the room, as a messenger of the Almighty God, he brings a message to you. Now, Zacharias, as I said in Luke 1, 19, 20, has been praying for a child for such a long time. And there he appears, Gabriel, in the altar of God, and said, Zachariah, this is God's will for you. Your prayers have been answered. You are going to have a child. Well, this man began to argue with him. How can uh, this happen, this and that? That they don't like. <laughs> <laughs> when they bring a message, number one, as Zacharias trembled, it makes you tremble. Not because their voice is gruff, but their attitude is... Uh, very uh, stiff, or their faces look stern. Stern, no. But they come from the presence of the Almighty God. Let me tell you an experience. A friend of mine was working in the Baba Atomic Research Center in Bombay, and he told me that to protect you from the radiation. They always give you a particular coat to protect you. One day, his friend uh, finished his job, went out. Then he found out he left the car key on his table. So he came back, but he forgot to put that protecting coat just for one time, just for one time. That too, only for a few fleeting moments. He grabbed the car key, came running out. Suddenly, he felt something happening to his left shoulder. He found the whole flesh on the side of the shoulder, just falling down like that. Falling the, apart from his bones. Apart from his, only bones could be seen. Horrifying experience, the radiation, the power, the nuclear power, the, the, the energy, the atomic energy. Likewise, when these people come, the mighty power of God carries with them. The glory of God comes with them. And that only makes you tremble, not they, 
but the presence of god the supernatural it's the atmosphere they create when they come in uh, the, 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 the atmosphere in which they were standing, standing. all the time they're standing before they carry god that here. i am gabriel who is standing before the presence of the almighty god and i thought that you will believe <laughs> <laughs> so it makes you tremble and the second thing is that the moment they enter you are filled with the new anointing and power okay that's it the anointing that is in the presence of god comes, comes upon you and you begin to tremble and they are always in a hurry as i said before the throne of grace the mercy seat 10000 of 10000 angels of god are there revelation chapter 5 11 and 12 and again in daniel chapter 7 9 to 13 crores and crores and millions and millions of people but it is only the angels of god so even then they are in a hurry because the lord jesus may be waiting there to give them the next errand <laughs> the next errand so for example if you read psalm 91 he says when you walk the angels of god will carry you so he may search where is gabriel i have to send him to denakaran or i may have to send him to mary mary is going to a new place he he will have to carry her so they are on a protection mission sometimes uh, yeah no sir several several missions i'll come to that later now only the appearance i'm talking about the appearance so they are always in a hurry they are always in a hurry they come once i was praying for my own city and i was praying for 10 things and suddenly an angel of god came i was fasting and praying for so many days an angel of god came and the presence of god came and it uh, filled the room and he said dinakaran god has sent me to bring answers to all your 10 questions will you take take it down i said please i don't have a paper <laughs> i don't have a pen because he said i am in a hurry to go back i am in a hurry to go back that's a real sign that he is an angel of god i am in a hurry to go back so the uh, i i really begged him please i will take a piece of paper and pen he said all right quick <laughs> and he would 1 2 3 4 like that he this is the answer to the, this answer to this answer and said god bless you and there he is out uncle when uh, have you seen uh, angels uh, do they have sword or anything in their hands now as i said the angels of god uh, are very pleasing and uh, uh, their main mission is to carry messages, messages to mankind if you read genesis 28 verse 12 Jacob saw he thought that he has been he's a forgotten commodity his mom is not there dad is not there and he is sleeping in the wilderness then he saw this wonderful dream a big ladder touching heaven and earth and in that angels of god ascending and descending john 1:51 but no precious lord was talking to this fellow nathaniel he said from now on you will see the angels of god going up and coming down all the time they'll be in touch with me and uh, thank god even in the garden of gethsemane luke 22 43 and 44 an angel of god came to strengthen him to encourage him so that is their main job that's their main calling but then as i said this uh, mighty angel of god michael he uh, 
He is the only one who has to fight a battle. He also doesn't need a dagger or a sword. But uh, for example, if you read Isaiah 37 and 36, just one angel was sent by God. He destroyed 185,000 soldiers, one stroke. So they don't need a sword. Nevertheless, if you read Joshua chapter 5, there he find a person dressed like the commander in chief. It's an angel of God. And it's actually God coming in the form <laughs> of an angel. But uh, he had a sword. And you read again when Balaam, the great prophet, going astray in uh, Numbers, uh, 22 and 23, you read about that. He saw an angel of God with a sword, in a, a drawn sword, ready to strike. So, very rarely you see uh, this um, sword. But, as I said, in Revelation 12, 7, Michael is the chief of the army of the Almighty God. And uh, I have seen him. Only he has a sword hanging. And uh, again I say, this is a supernatural sword. It is not a natural man-made, uh, rather it's not a iron, metal like <laughs> metal, metal -like sword. It is a, a sword that is given by the Almighty God. I don't know it, what material it is made of, but I feel it is ornamental. A friend of mine, um, had a uh, bridegroom for his uh, daughter from the army. <laughs> so <laughs> when, uh, when he was married, oh, we were horrified yeah. to find him <laughs> having a sword <laughs> on the side. And uh, of course, he looked beautiful with that sword and so on. And uh, they said, that's a tradition. Tradition more, of the army It's more people. decorative. It's more yeah. decorative. <laughs> Uh, and he's not going to drag that uh, sword to <laughs> yes. ter terrorize his wife. <laughs> we don't expect him to do that. Uh, uh, but he has. It adds. Uh, yes, it, it, it's add to his uh, stature. stature. And uh, as I said, the face of an angel is always sweet, happy. He makes you happy. And... Uh, he, may, he encourages you, and there are times he cries with you. And, uh, and the, 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 the angel Gabriel is a jolly good fellow. Angel Gabriel, very smiling. I have always seen him very happy. All the time he, he, he radiates the joy of the Lord. And uh, uh, you see, when he came to Daniel also, he said, Daniel, you are the most beloved of the Lord. God uh, never told him to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but he yeah. knew the mind of yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. You are a fellow who has found favor with the God man. Then why are you putting up this uh, six, six and of uh, uh, the, how the clock looks at uh, six thirty p.m. Both the <laughs> both <laughs> the dunks down. <laughs> both <the> <laughs> why you are like this? Uh, all the time praying, Lord, to save my people and. Why your face is like this? <laughs> you are the most beloved uh, person before God. So, he's a jolly good fellow. But Michael has a very stern and gruff face. The year 1985, I, I was in desperation and sorrow, broken heartedness because both my kidneys failed. And uh, I had no hope. And so we were in tears. And we were uh, uh, going through the hospital requirements, going through all kinds of treatments and so on. Everything was painful. One day, on the 23rd July, 1985, 
as I was alone in my bed. Just I come from the hospital and I was so desperate, all alone. My faithful wife, my faithful son, Paul, had just gone to take some little rest because 24 hours they were toiling with me. I was lying there and so full of weakness and helplessness and what not. More than that, my heart was broken and I said, Lord, I have faithfully served you. I never bothered about my body and I spent all my time in either preaching or praying for the people. Why you have left me? What is going to happen to me? How long am I going to stay like this? Suddenly an angel of God appeared. He said, on the 23rd July, 85, he said, on the 1st August, you'll be a free man. I was taken aback. Yeah, he said, yes, on the 1st August, you'll be a free man. And he disappeared. Well, there was absolutely no chance of my becoming free on the 1st August. Then, on the 25th July, that is, I'm recording this on the 25th July. The same day. Same day. <laughs> that is 17 years 17 ago. 17 years back. Yes. At early morning, 4 o'clock, the Lord Jesus came. And I knew that he is there and I sat up. He came, sat by my side, and talked to me for nearly two hours about the young partner's plan. I was one side wondering, one side I was uh, in agony. I'm suffering so much, and I thought the Lord Jesus Christ has come to heal me and set me free so that the uh, words of the angel shall come true. But he was talking to me about the young partner's plan. He said, son, there are so many, many young children who come to your meetings. What have you done for them? And you should catch them young. And you should tell them about me. And then they will remain faithful to the end. And what we should do, how we should uh, register their names, how their names should be called in the prayer talk. Two full hours. Then he smiled and he went away. I was just wondering what is it <laughs> all about. Then came the call from a common friend of ours. He said, brother, get ready immediately. I'm coming in my car to take you to the hospital. And they want to have a transplant for you. Morning 6. I asked her, how much time you have? She said, no time. You will have to get ready immediately. They want you there immediately. So 25th, we went. Of course, it was 3 PM when I was rolled into the operation theater. My wife was crying. Paul was crying. And uh, uh, the doctors there were keep on, keeping on encouraging them. and. Uh, well, we went through the whole thing. It's an agonizing experience. Even today I pray, Lord, I've gone through enough agonizing experience in the hospitals, no more hospital. If you want to take me home, take me home. When I sleep or when I'm well, don't send me to an hospital and then take me home. You don't need an hospital and hospital equipments to take me home. That's my prayer even today. Oh, I went through all those horrifying experiences. 1969 I went through, 1985, 1990, 1993. Thank God from 93, he has kept me in good health. And I'm able to preach the gospel without <laughs> the agony of going to the hospital and standing there. No, thank God. I may go to the hospital just for a visit or to get a, a medical opinion whenever my doctor wants me to come and see him but not to be admitted as an inpatient. Well, we went through the whole thing. 
on the 31st of July, the doctors told me, well, we may release you tomorrow. I was so happy. And uh, then 31st night came. It was 9 p.m. Exactly at 9 p.m., they'll chain the nurses, chain my bed, everything. And then uh, they, they said, now you can go to sleep. And that was the first time my wife really went to sleep near me. Well, she had only a small sofa on that she was lying and she was really sleeping because her heart was full of relief. And uh, all the other days she used to be awake the whole night not knowing what time I'll call. But thank God for that wonderful hospital, the wonderful hospital staff. Any moment they're ready to come and help you. And again at 12 o'clock, the nurse will change. <laughs> 12 o'clock, whether you are alive <laughs> or dead, he, you will be woken up. <laughs> and she will say, I am Shirley, your new nurse. Then <laughs> Karan, they used to call me Samuel. Samuel, Samuel, any time you want, press this bell. I am Shirley, you know that? I am Shirley. I said, yes, Shirley, let me sleep. <laughs> 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 they are so caring. I can never <laughs> forget them. And then I tried to sleep. Then came the powers of the evil world. Normally, I never care for this evil spirit. I never have a time for Satan or nothing. Because in John 14.30, the Lord Jesus said, Here comes the devil, the prince of this world, but I have nothing to do with him. He has nothing <laughs> to do with me. I have nothing to do with him. Only he is meddling in my efforts. I have nothing to do with him. So I have never and never and never and never thought about the devil at all. I will even today I will not think of him because there's no time even to think of our Lord Jesus Christ. 24 hours are not enough to think of him and to pray to him. All my time goes for praying and praying and praying for either myself or some problem or somebody else in agony. So where is the time to think of the devil? But that was the night I saw him in all his fury and anger. The angel of God said on the 23rd July, on the 1st August, then I current, you are going to be a free man. And the 31st July, when the doctors came and said, very pleased with your report, sir, and we may even think of uh, sending this you church. home. They smiled and uh, uh, cracked a joke. You may, we may even think of sending you home tomorrow. I thought it's all a joke. And he came. And I saw the whole hell behind him. They were so upset. They thought this fellow is finished. A real servant of God is an, a, a, the real, a real servant of God is a nuisance to them. Because the real servant of God stops the people from going to his kingdom, the hell. <laughs> he, he's stopping them and he's sending them to heaven. So naturally the devil is angry against them. But what does it matter whether he's angry or whether he's happy? It is his business. <laughs> we will do the master's <laughs> business. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That should be our attitude. And he was walking up and down, up and down, up and down. And the whole host of evil powers with a very angry look. And he said 